Our next topic in sound is examples of superposition, i.e., well, what is the other word for superposition of waves? Well, that would be interference. That is when two waves are at the same place at the same time, how they combine and add. So our first example is the example of beats. Let's check out this demo. Now what I have in this demo are two tuning forks which are attached to these boxes which act as just like a soundboard on a guitar. Now what I'm gonna first do is I've got them tuned to the exact same frequency or pretty darn close. When I hit them both, you just hear one tone. But the interesting part is this, I'm going to detune them slightly. I'm going to make this frequency a little bit different. And when I hit them now, you may hear an interesting phenomenon. What you may hear there is a pulsation. Those are called beats and they happen because of alternating constructive and destructive interference. I'm going to actually detune them even more and you will hear the beats again but you might hear something different about them. What is different about those? The frequency. It's a faster frequency, a higher frequency. In fact, the more out of tune these get, the higher the frequency. So I'm gonna get them, this is how you tune a musical instrument. You just play uh, a standard note, then you play the note of your instrument until the frequency goes down of the beats. I'm gonna get it more in tune. Those are even closer in tune, and when you get them exactly in tune, the beats disappear. After detuning it again, Hear those pulsations? Those are called beats, and here's why they happen. What I have here is a graph of two waves of slightly different frequency, and I am graphing the pressure versus the time. So we've got two different longitudinal waves happening at the same time. You can see that sometimes they actually completely cancel each other. In other words, they're, one has a compression when the other one has a rarefaction, but other times they're exactly in phase, meaning that the compressions overlap in time or the rarefactions overlap in time. So what I'm gonna do now is zoom out a bit so we can see the bigger picture here. Here's a picture of this zoomed out so we can see that there are certain places where these two waves are exactly out of phase by half a cycle. We have the compression of one at the same time as the rarefaction as the other. And sometimes they're in phase where the compressions exactly line up in time. See if you can figure out what time the, uh, they're out of phase by half a cycle and what time or times they're in phase. Take a look at that real quick. Well, if you can see uh, carefully, you'll be able to see that right around 100 milliseconds, they're completely out of phase. One has a compression when the other one has a rarefaction. But right around 400 milliseconds, they're exactly in phase. They exactly overlap compression on compression, rarefaction on rarefaction. And that happens again later. At 700 milliseconds, they're completely out of phase again. And then back at 1,000 milliseconds, they're back in phase again. Uh, so at 700, compression hits rarefaction, and at 1,000, compression hits compression, and rarefaction hits rarefaction. What that leads to is the following. This graph is of the sum of the two waves. So you can see where the compression hit the rarefaction, the waves actually cancel out at 100 milliseconds, and there's silence. Where the compression is the compression, and rarefaction is rarefaction, the waves add up such that we have an even bigger compression and a bigger rarefaction, and that's where the sound is loudest. 
Again, at 700, they cancel. And again, at 1,000 milliseconds, they are exactly in phase and it's loud again. And what happens is the beats. And take a look at this and see if you can figure out the period of the beats for these waves. How long between silences is a good way of looking at that. That would be the period of this uh, pulsation. How long between silences? Well, you can see we have a silence at 100. We have a silence at 700. So 600 milliseconds is the period of this wave. And then you can also figure out the frequency just by putting one over that. Now, there actually is an equation for the frequency of those beats. If you've got two frequencies, F1 and F2, where F1 is a higher frequency than F2, the frequency of the beats is simply F1 minus F2. Beats occur because of alternating constructive and destructive interference. When you have constructive interference, it gets loud. When you have destructive interference, it gets very soft or goes away entirely. And that is why you have those beats. Our next demonstration requires you to answer this question. Can two loud sounds make a soft sound? Or even no sound at all? Well, if you understood the last demonstration, you could probably get this. Make a prediction and we'll check it out. What I've got here are two speakers hooked up to a stereo system. Both speakers individually are playing pretty loud. Here's one of them. Here's the other speaker. Both are playing pretty loud. But when I put them together, look what happens. Together, they are quiet. One by itself. The other by itself, together, quiet. What is going on with this? To answer that question, we need to look at the back of the speakers. Now, this is how one is hooked up. And you'll notice there's two different wires. There's a red wire and a black wire. And I've got this hooked up correctly. Uh, the, real, the color of the wires doesn't matter, but the polarity does. Uh, this one is hooked up to the red. This one's hooked up to the black. Everything's cool. But notice that on this speaker, it's reverse polarized. The red wire is hooked up to the black lead, and the black wire is hooked up to the red contact. So that is reverse of what it's supposed to be. So one of these speakers is out of phase with the other. One's pushing, creating a compression, while the other is pulling, creating a rarefaction. They're going like this when they should be going like this together. So. Again, the explanation is one speaker creates compressions at the same time the other speaker's creating rarefactions. When they reach your ear, what do they add to? Now, you might say zero, but the equilibrium point for our atmosphere is atmospheric pressure. So when one's comp creating compressions, the other one's creating rarefactions. So this is what the speakers look like. And when they reach your ear, those two longitudinal waves cancel, creating no sound at your ear. Now, that's something you can really apply in real life because if you reverse polarize one of your speakers in your dorm room, there are going to be dead spots all around your room where you won't be able to hear any music at all. Make sure that they're in phase with each other. Red goes to red contact, black goes to black contact on both speakers and they will be in phase and the music will sound great.